All right, good morning to you all. Happy Friday. Uh, appreciate y'all for watching this here. Um, it is October 18th, 2024. Uh, we've got some interesting information to go over here with you guys. I wanted to go ahead and put out a video now. I know we haven't put out one since Monday, but um, as long as we don't have a lot of stuff going on, I'll probably be making videos periodically for you guys. Uh, we've got some severe weather today and tomorrow that we might be live streaming. We'll just kind of wait and see what happens with it. But I want to get here and talk to you guys about something interesting. And this is not severe weather related. This is not tropics related. This is about winter. We now have the National Weather Service and NOAA winter uh, season outlook for between now and February. And that is up on your screen here currently right now. Once again, we have the official outlook here. This will probably get updated about it one more time here at the end of November as we officially start into December. But kind of see those changes and we go over this once that does happen but as of right now this is your official seasonal temperature outlook between now this was valid yesterday all the way through january december january and february of 2025 and you guys can see if you're a snow lover not looking good um this can subject to change but i wanted to talk about this because this is a pretty significant thing. We've actually uh undergone what's in a neutral uh enzo pattern right now and basically what that means is you know, we could see some areas see above average snowfall that's not being shown. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. We could see some areas that, you know, typically see snow, not see anything. I do think this is going to be sort of kind of like last year where we don't see a lot of big snowfall totals in the Northeast. That could change, but we're just kind of looking at the, uh, the temperature outlook here. And what you see is more orange than blue, and that typically does favor warmer temperatures. Uh, what you guys can see here is we've got portions of the Northeast, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, down into the Southeast, portions of the Southern Plains, and into the four corners and over into California, Nevada area, we are seeing temperatures at least the next three months more than likely above average. Now, this is monthly, so this is going to be based off of each month here. We could see some areas throughout each month that we see below average temps. We could see some average averages kind of dip down. We could see, you know, a lot of tra tra transitions here and changes with this official outlook, but just kind of wanted to give you guys an overview of what we're seeing here. Below average temperatures do favor in a La Nina on or in a La Nina based weather pattern during the winter. Up in the West Pacific, we have those lows that come in. We get typically our big block cluster uh, snowstorms up in the West Pacific. So Washington State, Oregon, Nevada, or not Nevada, Washington State, Oregon, uh, into portions of Idaho as well there. We've got Minnesota. We've got uh, where that cold air dome is going to be sitting at. All the cold air is going to be locked in place up into Canada. Now, typically, some of these systems, we can have that cold air be brought down here into the Ohio Valley, into the Central Plains, into the Northeast, into the Mid-Atlantic. But it does take more forcing, more of the um, different oscillations. You got the... Uh, Arctic Oscillation, you got diff a lot, uh, differently a lot of things that are going to play a factor into this, and we'll start to talk more about this as we start to see these winter storms kind of pop up on the model runs, kind of start to see when we get into that official active pattern here for winter storm season. We are going to start to see that officially in the next week, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. That's your average temperature outlook. Like I said, this is subject to change, but this is kind of what we're overall thinking. Uh, like I said, that La Nina pattern does favor more snowfall and more colder air up north. Than it does into the northeast into the majority portions of the southeast and into the ohio valley so if you're wanting snow in the ohio valley don't hold your breath as of right now this forecast doesn't look the best for you guys now we have seen in years past as well uh we can go back to portions of the 1990s where we've seen these patterns kind of set up like this this is going to be a short term la nina meaning we're not going to see this one to four year ratio of la nina we're going to more than likely go back into a potentially an el nino state next summer and that will have more implications and more implications and we'll talk about that once we get to that portion of things. But just looking at this, neutral patterns do favor more snowstorms, like I said, in the West Pacific than they do in the Northeast. We could see some storms hopefully come down here. If you want snow, we're going to have to see some changes with this, you know, with the overall pattern if we're going to see that happen. So that's the first thing there. The bigger other picture that we're going to be seeing here is going to be the precip. This is the same outlook here, except precip wise. Uh, where do we see the highest concentrations of above average precip over here in the West Pacific, over here in the upper Midwest? Typically, severe weather likes to set up in the Ohio Valley and upper Midwest this time of the year with that cold air and that warm air coming up out of the Gulf of Mexico. We can see that happen. Where do we see the worst of the rainfall not at? That's down here, once again, where that above average sequence of temperatures are going to be at. So Florida's had a lot of rain. You guys are going to have a drought potentially set up maybe here through the winter months. Hopefully that's not the case, but it could even out where all of the rain is kind of set up basically over the last couple of months. So this would be a good break for Florida. Portions of the Carolinas need that break a little bit. We do need some rain, so hopefully we'll get some periodic rain chances throughout the time of, of between now and February, but mostly looking at potentially a drought setting up over in portions of Texas, Oklahoma, into the four corners there in the Eastern California. Now we did see a couple years ago as well, the 2022 or 2022 uh, and 2023 forecast was kind of set up like this as well. And we saw blockbuster snow events over in the higher elevations of the California area. So this can happen as well. We can see some of these... Patterns and, and forecast completely bust. Some of them go to fruition. Some of them don't. So 
take this with a grain of salt, but this is just kind of what we're looking at here from NOAA and the National Weather Service kind of collabing here and giving us an idea on what we're going to be seeing. So we will be seeing more potential precip up in the northern Midwest into the higher northern plains there and then into the West Pacific and lesser as you go through down further south toward the Gulf of Mexico and into the four corners there and into the portions of the Florida area. So equal chances will be in the middle there in the white. That's why you're not seeing shaded colors there. But I just wanted to get on here and give you guys a implication of what we're going to be looking at as far as that situation goes uh, for you guys here. Now, let's go ahead and go over here and talk about what we're going to be seeing mean term wise in the next couple of days. We're not expecting any major severe weather outbreaks. We're not expecting any tropical systems. You guys can pretty much kiss 94L goodbye. And then the one that's down in the Caribbean, that will be no impact to the United States. We've got a wall of shear that's basically set up over the Gulf of Mexico right now and off the coast of Florida that's keeping anything out. So that's really, really good news. So for all my people that were thinking there was going to be a hurricane coming to Florida, that's not. You can crush that. You can throw that out the window. Um, we'll continue to watch that if something were to change. But as of right now, we're not expecting anything with that. Now, the biggest conversation over today and tomorrow is going to be severe weather. And we might go live for this today and potentially tomorrow if this, in fact, does actually happen. We do have a marginal risk for severe weather in eastern Mexico or eastern New Mexico here in portions of northwestern Texas Panhandle here. This does have a 2% tornado risk with us today. Roswell, New Mexico, Las Vegas, New Mexico, Ratton, and Tucumcari. Uh, there or Tucum Carry there in New Mexico as well. Wind and Hailford are also on the lower end, but we might go live for this if this tornado risk conditionally does in fact happen. We've seen a lot of times this year these 2% tornado risks have produced either outbreaks or stuff like that. So it's kind of on standby in case something like that were to happen. Hopefully not, but just be there just in case. Uh, also tomorrow we have another marginal risk for severe weather. Same thing as today, expecting uh, once again a tornado risk, uh, hail risk, and wind threat all on the low end side of things. This might get upgraded to slight tomorrow potentially. There's a couple models, the HER, the NAM3K, that are showing some pretty aggressive supercell complexes that could develop if, in fact, the moisture is enough here, if, in fact, the dry line setup is enough to force that lifting mechanism to happen here. So we will have the favorability for tornadoes, wind and hail today and tomorrow over here into the portions of the, the, the higher country here in eastern New Mexico and western Texas. So just be mindful of that today and tomorrow if you have plans. Um, and we'll see this upper level trough come through. Now, what's the big reason on why we're getting severe weather? Uh, there is the potential here, like I said, for this upper level disturbance to kind of sit over the four corners here for the next two to three days. Uh, we can clearly see the uh, southeastern side of this low here is going to potentially um, give us the chance there for, I don't know why that just did that, uh, but give us the chance here for the potential for some severe weather on that eastern quadrant, kind of like a hurricane, but on the southeastern and northeastern side of a low, you can get severe weather to set up, and that's where we're seeing that strong southwesterly flow anywhere here in the middle upper level, mid to upper levels around 48 knots to 60 knots, so just kind of be mindful of that, like I said, if you're out today and tomorrow uh, in these areas. As we go through that low, we'll move into the central plains on Monday. Could see a little small shot of severe weather potentially here over Nebraska and Portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, maybe on Monday. We'll keep our eyes on that right now. No severe weather forecasted on Monday. This disturbance will move its way east, and then we'll start to set more up of a older air mass into late next week. Now, we're not expecting any major severe weather outbreaks through next week or really anything ongoing at all. It'll be another relatively quiet week to start through next week, the last week before uh, Halloween gets here. So you get, Hall you get your Halloween preparation plans kind of in place here for this. But just wanted to run over that. Could see a couple disturbances dip down, especially as we get into next week. And I'm starting to see... Some red flags thrown for the potential for maybe a severe weather setup, a bomb cyclone setup over portions of the northern Midwest, maybe for some snow showers to break out somewhere in the portions of Halloween for some people in the central plains and northern plains. We'll kind of talk more about that as we get through next week, but we're going to see a couple of these disturbances and potentially even a severe weather uh, event setting up on Halloween. And that's not uncommon to see this happen as we're getting that transition from fall to winter. Uh, but we could see maybe an upper level low with a potential nugget of tilted trough come through as we get through Halloween, maybe some severe weather over the upper Midwest and central plains with some very cold air coming in behind this. And that was where we were just talking about that temperature potential being a difference at. So just something to be mindful of. I do think that we're going to start to get very, very active as far as the overall uh, severe weather pattern goes and the overall snowmaker goes. Um, so just be patient with that. Once again, if you have severe weather preparedness, you make sure you go over that with your family, your loved ones, because we will start to see in the November and December here those severe weather, especially over the Ohio and Mid uh, Ohio Valley and Mid Atlantic and Northern Plains, kind of ramp up once again as we start to see the battle of the seasons. Now, this is just an idea of what the precip's going to look like. You can see the showers and the storms here firing off over portions of uh, eastern New Mexico into western Texas today and tomorrow. You guys can see those storms kind of firing off. If we need to go live, like I said, we'll go live for that down the road if that does happen. That upper level disturbance does move out, bring some rain showers over to the portions of the western Ohio Valley, maybe on Tuesday, not seeing much with this. And then that cold air, get a little bit of sweep of cold air up here in the northern uh, portions of Michigan into the northeast, maybe some rain showers on Thursday and Friday. And then we start to turn our attention to what could be a Halloween weather event, potentially late next week into the 
um, weekend, and we could see some snow in the northern Dakotas, in the southern Dakotas there, in the portions of the uh, Minnesota area there with a strong upper level low that could develop next week. Really going to be watching this and talking about this, especially as we get towards the end of next week here uh, and, and into that final week of October, but potentially even a severe weather setup along the Ohio Valley and into the Ozarks there as we go towards Halloween. So a couple things to watch for, guys. Not expecting anything super, super significant as of right now. If that changes, I'll let you guys know. Um, but other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. We might do one tomorrow. I'll just kind of wait and see. Might wait until Sunday or Monday again to do another video. But other than that, guys, be safe, be weather aware, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Um, have a great weekend as well, guys.